Hi, in the next couple videos here, we're going to start to talk about this process, the process of cellular respiration. And the, the process of cellular respiration is really summed up in this subtitle. It's all about harvesting chemical energy. Remember that chemical energy is just a molecule, uh, the potential energy that's locked up in molecules. And we want to talk about the type of molecules that are going to allow organisms at the cellular level, at the system level, at the organism level that allows them to get work done. It's all about ATP. The point is to make ATP. And the little that you should know about this so far that adenosine triphosphate from the last lesson is that uh, ATP, adenosine triphosphate, needs to be synthesized from smaller compounds. A, ATP is a, a big molecule, a compound macromolecule made from smaller components. And there's a cycle of ATP. When it is broken down into smaller components, energy is released, and then cellular energy is needed to uh, synthesize ATP again. So energy is stored in molecules. It's stored in organic molecules. And of course, these come from the carbs and the fats and the proteins that we take in in our diet. Um, as heterotrophs, um, other feeders, we have to eat those molecules. Um, other animals, or sorry, other organisms that are autotrophs, that are self-feeders, uh, those are able to obtain those compounds in another way. In fact, they can build them using sunlight as an energy source. But uh, we eat to take in the fuels to make ATP, which we will then use to help us build biological molecules and grow and move and perform physiological jobs and processes that we need to to sustain life. Glucose is the molecule that we want to focus on. Glucose um, all organisms, they, they somehow oxidize glucose or utilize glucose uh, from the food or from the, from the materials that they obtain. And it's the catabolism. Of course, remember, catabolism is breakdown. Catabolism is digestion. It's exergonic. Therefore, it's energy releasing. But um, in this process of cell respiration, the glucose plus oxygen is going to yield energy with some other byproducts, including water and carbon dioxide. Um, like combustion, if you, if you think of a combustion reaction, um, you've got a little bit of your fuel, um, it, you've got to have oxygen uh, plus a little spark, and that can, that can start to burn or release um, a lot of energy, probably in the form of heat. Um, that combustion, I mean, that's exactly the way a combustion engine works. You take your fuel, you combine it with uh, an intake of oxygen, you, you put it in a container in a small little enclosed piston with a spark from a spark plug, and it will burn and release a lot of energy to, to eventually drive a crankshaft or an, or an automobile. Well, well, respiration, cell respiration is really the same thing. Taking the fuel and adding some oxygen uh, with, a, with a little spark, with a little energy, um, energetics, and then, of course, enzymes that will regulate the process a lot of energy in the form of this ATP molecule can be released. And, of course, some heat as a byproduct as well. So we really want to talk about how we harvest the energy from the fuels, which are really we're talking about the food that we eat. And we do that by digesting large macromolecules into smaller ones. Remember these four words that we've talked about before. All matter contains energy. And really what that means is that in the bonds, there's a lot of potential energy in the bonds, but we've really never explained what that means. I mean, where is energy stored in the bonds? It's not like there's little compartments in between the covalent bonds of macromolecules where they can store energy, like if they have their little mini fridge or whatever, but actually by the transfer of electrons, the movement of electrons from one molecule to another because the electrons will carry that potential energy with them. And 
kind of the end point is knowing that then that energy, when we break bonds and move electrons, that energy can be used a couple different ways. You can store it in another bond, you know, as in building up molecules, the synth synthesis of molecules. It can be released as heat. Remember, that's not going to get any energy done, or excuse me, that's not going to get any work done when it's lost as heat. Or it can be harvested. That extragonic released energy can be harvested to make ATP. And what you should have already learned, that's what it's all about. So this can get a little confusing here. Um, and we want, to, we want to slow down and just talk about this transfer of electrons so that we can follow in general what happens in the metabolic processes when, when organisms harvest energy or ATP. So if we have these two macromolecules here, um, just the yellow and the blue here, um, if we break bonds in big molecules, we can move the electrons from one to the other. If an electron, or excuse me, if a macromolecule loses its electrons, if it donates it to something else, um, then it's going to become more positive. So the yellow molecule here loses electrons. If it loses that negative charge, it becomes more positive. Likewise, the blue one here, if it gains the electrons, we say that that's going to become more negative. And we actually call this, if you lose, that molecule is called oxidized. If it gains, that molecule is called reduced. And these are actually a couple of reactions. They're called an oxidation reaction or a reduction reaction. And again, it has to do with what we just explained with the transfer of electrons. And together, they're called redox. What's really cool is you don't have to think about these as separate reactions. Um, they always occur together. Oxidation and, re and reduction always occur together in a system. So therefore, they're, they're named together as a redox reaction. As electrons move from one atom to another, um, they're, they're going to actually change energy. So as, an, as a molecule loses electrons, it becomes oxidized. Therefore, it's going to be at a lower state. As the organism, again, sorry, the molecule gains electrons, it's actually going to have be at a higher level of energy. So the reduced form of a molecule, since it gained those electrons, and remember, electrons are going to carry energy, the reduced form has a higher level of energy. The oxidized form has a lower form of energy. Now, in living systems, electrons don't just jump around by themselves. Uh, they're actually carried in chemical reactions by the movement of hydrogen, um, hydrogen atoms. When a hydrogen atom, a proton and electron, when it is moving as a part of uh, going from reactants to products in chemical reactions, the, obviously the hydrogen is going to carry along electrons with it. So again, the same thing. Remember, one compound loses, the other one's going to gain. Well, here's an example of it actually using the cell respiration formula that you should be familiar with. Here we have glucose plus oxygen is going to yield carbon dioxide and, and water as byproducts, and it's going to yield this ATP. But look what's happening here. The, the glucose is going to be oxidized fully into its, into its product. It's going to be oxidized by the transfer of hydrogens, of course. And each of the carbons has been cleaved off here from a six-carbon compound here to a one-carbon compound, but they're six individual ones. Been cleaved off, and all of the hydrogens have been stripped and transferred to the oxygen. Um, Remember that oxygen is the most electronegative atom in living systems. Remember how electronegative it is? That means that, I mean, it's really going to be, it's the premier electron acceptor in biological systems. Uh, what's been reduced here is the reduction comes from oxygen, oxygen um, 
being an electron acceptor. So in the reactant, we have oxygen, but through the chemical process, it actually accepts hydrogens, thus it accepts electrons, thus it has been reduced uh, by accepting those electrons. So recall that the redox reactions in respiration, there's a coupling. They go together. There's always going to be oxidation with a reduction. There's always going to be a with reduction with oxidation. So the redox reactions are going to release energy as they break down big organic molecules. This is just review a little bit of the last screen, but as we break the carbon bonds, carbon to carbon bonds, what you're doing is you're oxidizing those down into a lower energy or uh, molecule. Again, this compound is a six carbon molecule. If you look over here, carbon dioxide is a one carbon molecule. Just to balance everything out, we have six of them, but it's six individual one carbon molecules. So as you, again, strip off um, the hydrogens, you remove the hydrogens, you're also going to be transferring, you're going to be transferring electrons. And what are they going to be attracted to? Of course they're going to be attracted to the oxygen. Remember how electronegative it is? So um, here's something just to remember and to tuck away is that the oxygen is not, in chemical reactions of respiration, oxygen is not simply exchanged in the cell for carbon dioxide, you actually are going to get water from the reduction of oxygen. We can come back to that later. But the, uh, the redox reactions, they are used to release energy. The most important thing, it sounds a little weird, but they re release energy. Why? So that you can actually build the one molecule for chemical currency that you need, A T. P. So a little review here of the oxidation and reduction side of a redox reaction. Oxidation, what happens there is that you're going to add oxygen. There's an addition of oxygen. Remember that oxygen is the great electron acceptor. I think that'll be, as we look into cell respiration a little bit more, um, electron accepting by oxygen is a, a very important um, aspect. Think about that. That means that you need to have an input of oxygen to efficiently, to efficiently um, make ATP. Well, think about that next time you're running your third or fourth lap around a track. Remember how important it is to get oxygen into your body so that you can prolong um, or promote the additional making of ATP? Anyway, oxidation is also the removal of Hydrogen. If you remove hydrogen, what are you bringing along with it? You're also losing electrons. So oxidation is the removal of electrons. Since that's occurring, you're moving electrons. If you're losing electrons, you must be losing or releasing energy. That's what occurs in an exergonic reaction. The reduction on the other side, what is reduced you're losing an oxygen, but you're adding hydrogens. As you add hydrogens, you must be gaining electrons. If you're gaining electrons, you must be storing, accepting and storing energy. You must be becoming a higher energy molecule. So the reduction part of it is becoming an, at a higher state of energy. Well, that is an exergonic reaction. You put them together, and what you can release is a molecule of ATP, the energy currency molecule. I really think it's important to stop and go back in the video and replay things and, and just try to comprehend, write out your own notes about what's going on here, what I'm talking about. Um, but here's kind of a summary of what's going on. And remember that oxidation, oxidation is the loss of electrons. So if we have compound A here, um, it becomes oxidized by 
donating its electrons, by losing its electrons. Compound B becomes reduced by accepting this. We often, kind of an old traditional way to remember this is oil rig, oil rig. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. So if it is oxidized, it has lost electrons. If it's reduced, it has gained. And here's just another way to think about that. Remember that these always happen together. So when you put them together, if you have compound A and B um, that are reactants, well, compound A reduces compound B. Compound B oxidizes compound A. Just look at how they, how they affect one another. But it still comes down to this. Oxidation is the loss of electrons. Oxidized compound has lost electrons. And remember, thus that means that it has lost energy. The oxidized compound has, or excuse me, the reduced compound has gained electrons, therefore it has gained energy. You want to remember that mnemonic device. Oil rig, oil rig, oil rig. So where we're going to get to, I know that this screen kind of looks like uh, I had some pixels blow up here on the screen, but um, again, moving electrons in the process of, a, of respiration is, is how we can harvest energy. So this looks really, really confusing here, but there are some other compounds that we will follow, that we call them electron carriers, um, that really, again, they shuttle around electrons by physically shuttling around hydrogens. And remember, if you're moving electrons, you are transferring energy. So these electrons are kind of like putting some money in the bank. They're carrying electrons, therefore, they're carrying, they're carrying potential energy to be used to regenerate or to synthesize ATP. In the big picture, which we'll get to, we won't let this be overly daunting here, but in the big picture of, of the stages of cellular respiration, there's some individual stages that we'll look at. Each one of those harvests its own ATP su supply, I guess, kind of accounts for its own contribution to making ATP for the cell, but there's also, in, in part of the metabolic stages, there's also some production of these electron carriers, which essentially, like we said, is money in the bank to be harvested later for an even greater production of that ATP. But we'll get there. What's the point? ATP is always the point. The production of the energy currency molecule, because this molecule holds relatively, I'll say, a ton of potential energy to do the work of cells. That's it. Go back, review, rewind, pause, fast forward. No, don't fast forward. Good luck.